Ah, another year, another PAX. And just like last year, I got the chance to play a whole bunch of really cool games. AAA, indie, board games, all over the place. I only got to go for one day this year, but I still managed to play a whole bunch of different titles, and tonight I want to tell you about my favorites. These are my top 10 games from PAX East 2018. Witch It by Barrel Roll Games is a game of hide and seek, pretty much like Prop Hunt meets the Salem Witch Trials. You have two teams, one of witches that can transform into many of the objects in the environment, and the other of hunters that try to find and kill them. It's pretty much a basic clone of Prop Hunt with a few power-ups added in for variety's sake. It's not super deep, and the maps can be a bit too big, leaning things in the witch's favor, but these issues can be ironed out by the time the game leaves early access. It's a simple but fun time for anyone. Well, this is interesting. Coming off the success of the original Super Meat Boy, it seems like Team Meat didn't want to stick to the same old gameplay style, and what we have as a result is Super Meat Boy Forever, an endless runner with a pretty steep difficulty that's just as addicting as the first game. While I did enjoy my time with the demo, I did knock it down a few spots on the list because I'm not entirely sure I like the endless runner style since it makes the game feel a bit too simple, almost like a mobile game it was originally pitched to be but I guess we'll find out if it can change my mind when the game releases sometime this year. Okay, I never thought I'd see a game about BMX biking on this list, but here we are. Descenders is a game about going downhill on a bike. If that sounds boring, then you haven't seen these hills. Crazy obstacle courses that go by at blazing speeds as you make your way down a mountain trying to achieve objectives while staying alive. It may have some lackluster graphics, but when this game's in motion, everything just clicks. It's in early access on Steam right now, and the price may be a little steep for some, but if you're into fast-paced gameplay, this might be a title to check out. Coming in at number 7, we have Head Snatchers by Iceberg Interactive. It's a dumb game. Honestly, it's really dumb. But it's also dumb fun. The premise changes based on the map, but in general, the goal is to knock off your opponent's head in order to achieve an objective while keeping your own safe. It's completely insane, but tons of fun, and had us all at the booth laughing and screaming while trying to keep our heads on straight. Head Snatchers will be released on PC and PS4 this spring, and I can't wait to give it a try. What do you get when you combine a team of passionate part-time developers, a dark tone, and some awesome visuals? You get Immure, a psychological horror game about a man named Will trapped inside a mansion full of dimensional doorways and tormented souls. The art style is beautiful, and the puzzle gameplay is really interesting. The game is really shaping up to be something special, so while there's no release scheduled yet, it's definitely one to keep an eye on. When a renaissance artist runs out of paint, what is he to do? Well, he sends his apprentices out to the market to get some, of course. This is the simple premise behind Pigment, a fun little board game for 2-3 players by Copper Frog Games. Each player fights over paint resources, trying to be the first to complete 6 paintings and win the game. The competitive aspect is really cool, and with a bit of practice, I could see the strategies becoming more clear. It's a fun time and a game that I'll be sure to pick up when it's released this May. One stick and one button. That's all you get in this time-bending puzzle game, The Gardens Between. Here, you play the role of time itself, able to move time forward and back while changing the way certain objects are interacted with in the environment. It's a clever premise, but one that I could see becoming stale if the one-button mechanic isn't expanded upon. We'll have to wait and see how it does when it releases later this year.
I'm normally not a huge fan of Metroidvania style games, but something about Guacamelee really struck all of the right nerves and I fell in love. And Guacamelee 2 seems to be poised to continue that excellence. An insane Metroidvania beat-em-up with up to 4 player co-op gameplay makes for a crazy fun platformer that I can't wait to play when it's released... eventually. Oh, and you can play as a chicken. Instant win right there. In my early years, there was this little game called Yu-Gi-Oh! that I was totally obsessed with. A collectible card game that I just loved, even if I spent hundreds of dollars on cards that I no longer have. That's where the charm of Amberia comes in. A card game in which players try to collect points while stopping their opponents from doing the same. It's a complex game with a lot of deep mechanics, but the best part is that the decks are pre-made, so you'll only have to pay the relatively low price of the game to get a chance to play. If you're looking for a more in-depth review, I'd suggest checking out reviews on Unfiltered Gamer or Dice Tower, but for now I'll just say that the only thing keeping this game from the top spot is its awful online store and lack of presence on Cool Stuff Inc. or Amazon. Well, that, and number one, is really awesome. <sighs> okay, I have a confession to make. I really enjoy Heavy Rain. I love the idea of going through a story where the choices actually matter and affect the outcome, unlike, say, Telltale games where they just kinda change which character gets to sit around and do nothing for the next few chapters. Which is why Detroit Become Human was my favorite game at PAX East 2018. Yeah, the demo I played was the same one from its reveal and last year's E3, but damn it if it isn't fun to make the choices for yourself and see how the game pans out. I know David Cage games have had a tendency to be hit or miss in the past, but I am completely on board to try this one out and see how the game unfolds when it's released this May. My name is Connor. This is our story. So those are my top 10 games of PAX East 2018, and just like last year, I didn't get to play as many games as I would have liked, especially since I only got to go for one day this year, so I'm sure there's something that I missed. If you think that there is and you were at the show, be sure to comment down below and let me know what it was and maybe I'll check it out. And as usual, if you want to see more Mighty Reviews, Dissections, Top 10s, and all other gaming content, be sure to subscribe for more videos. And as always, have a mighty nifty day today. Beep